วิดครับ Welcome to NASDA Channel Special Interview It's our great honor to have Professor y o n g y u t y u t t h o n g in our program uh, he, he was uh, the, he got the Outstanding Scientist of Thailand Award in 1984 and got the Nikkei Asia Prize for Science in 2004 and uh, in, in the heading of Bios Spectrum magazine he was named as the man behind the first Thai drug just two years ago okay uh, so we have some question to ask professor so what do you love the most about science and research well science is like a mystery novel mm -hmm. it's uh, something that uh, rather than reading yes it's something that you do mm -hmm. you know you do with your hands mm -hmm. but it's like a novel because you don't know the plot mm -hmm. you don't know how it's going to end yes. how your experiments will work out mm -hmm. uh, but uh, no matter what happens you know there's always something exciting that follows usually you know when you do experimental science yes. or theoretical science mm -hmm. you try to answer a question which yeah. no one else has got the answer before so right. Once you got the answer, or maybe you fail to get the answer, mm -hmm. there's always the next step of, then what? So what? So uh, it goes on a ne never ending. Your answer leads to the second question. So how, how you come up with a good question in your research? Well, many people will have many reasons, you know, and many ways yes. of coming up with mm -hmm. their questions. But for me, there are two main factors. Mm -hmm. One is that uh, it has to be something that no one else yes. has known before. It's a big thrill to be the first person mm -hmm. in the world to know yeah. or to get you know, the solution yes. of, the, of the question. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two for me is that it's preferable, not, not necessary, but preferable if that solution is also useful. If, if we have a useful drug or if we have a useful process for doing something, mm -hmm. then I think then that makes it even more uh, uh, attractive. Mm -hmm. So what kind of impact uh, or con contribution of your research to the world? Well, it's not for me to decide. <laughs> it's really for, for the world to mm -hmm. decide. I I'm glad that uh, you know, in my early parts of my career, I did a lot of basic research mm -hmm. and, uh, and my work got cited a lot. Mm -hmm. In fact, one time I was given the award for higher citation by the Thailand Research Fund. Yes. And that was very good, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, my my uh, best work has uh, uh, many hundred uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 citations. That's a lot. And, uh, and so, uh, Altogether, I think people in the world mm -hmm. uh, appreciate our work. Usually my work is not my own work. I mm -hmm. rarely publish as a single author. I will mm -hmm. publish with my team yeah. and uh, the, the team get the, the credit. You know, everyone mm -hmm. in the team get the credit. And the uh, uh, last part of my career is more devoted to development of, of drugs anti-malarial drugs. Mm -hmm. So in this case, publication is just a byproduct, mm -hmm. but the real product is the drug that we, we would like to have. And I'm glad that uh, we have a number of candidates, mm -hmm. and one of which is now very advanced. It's in the advanced yes. clinical stage and hopefully we'll get into man, you know, human trial next mm -hmm. year. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, in your opinion, how, how ordinarily children become become great scientists. Is there any way to enhance or support? I think all children are potential scientists mm -hmm. because they like to ask questions. Right. Every child mm -hmm. likes to ask questions, you know, and uh, sometimes the grown-ups, mm -hmm. you know, suppress yeah. their uh, uh, eagerness, you know, mm -hmm. their tendency to ask questions by saying, this is rubbish, don't ask this, don't you know, ask so too many mm -hmm. questions. So their desire to ask questions is suppressed. Right. 
and in the end, you know, when they grow up to be maybe 12, 13, mm -hmm. already, you know, a lot of that urge to ask questions is gone. So if we have, you know, uh, our education system, and if the families, you know, preserve the curiosities mm -hmm. of the child, I think that uh, we will have many, many more uh, good scientists. And not only scientists, because mm -hmm. many other subjects, you know, careers, also need kind of logical thinking, need, you know, uh, ability to ask mm -hmm. good questions. So even if they're not scientists, they can become very good lawyers or bankers mm -hmm. or, I don't know, uh, uh, politicians. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's important. <laughs> As a scientist, uh, if, if you found somebody don't pay much attention or, or don't notice any impact of science and technology, how you would convince them? Well, uh, if you have a chance to yes. convince them, then you can try mm -hmm. by saying that, look, uh, this is useful and it's a product of science. Mm -hmm. Do you know how it's made and so on? But if he or she is not interested at all, then mm -hmm. don't worry, just, <laughs> just leave them yeah, uh, and uh, let them enjoy the fruits of science. Uh, I think uh, most people would have in, at the back of their mind mm -hmm. that they owe it to science, to technology, you know, for their good life mm -hmm. or for, you know, for the world that we are in right now. And sometimes they blame uh, science and technology also for all the bad yeah. You know yes. the uh, bad things that occur in the world. So we have to take the good with the bad. I'm afraid. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye. Sawadee kap. Sawadee kap.